Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Physics 30 Electromagnetic Radiation EMR, Lesson 6, Thin Lenses. Now, the Alberta Program of Study says there's one thing we have to talk about here. Describe quantitatively simple optical systems consisting of only one component for both lenses and curved mirrors. And lenses today. Now, many optical devices, including microscopes, telescopes, binoculars, LCD projectors, and your own eyes contain lenses. Unlike mirrors, Lenses refract light instead of reflecting it. A lens is said to be thin if the width of the lens is negligible compared to the focal length of the lens. If the lens is thin enough, the lateral displacement of the refracted ray can be ignored. See figure 13.58 and page 687. They nicely talk about this refraction. Basically what they're talking about here, if this is your lens, the light ray comes in an angle, it refracts, and comes out at the same, no, oh, that's horrible drawing. Refracts and then comes out parallel. Well, that's, these are supposed to be parallel. And what they're talking about here is the lateral displacement. The light ray moves sideways when it does that. Now, if you come to class, I can uh, show you that easily with a thick block. If the lens is thin enough, this displacement we don't worry about. Now, there are two types of thin lenses that we study in Physics 30. Convex lenses. Now notice the convex lens is thicker in the middle here and thinner at top and bottom. Convex lens converse, converge, v, v, R, converge light inward to the focal point F, called the principal focus. These are also called convergent lenses. Convex, convergent. Know those words, convex and convergent. Right now, as the uh, sorry, convex convergent. Most of you guys have concave lenses in your glasses if you wear glasses. These are thinner in the middle. When you go to the top and bottom, they're much thicker. Now, concave lenses. We call them concave because if you look at them, they go inwards like a cave. These diverge or spread out light. The refracted rays of divergent light appear to be coming from the focal point F after passing through the lenses. These are also called divergent lenses. They spread the light out. All right. Now, one thing to point out here. Like with curved mirrors, thin lenses have a principal axis, center of curvature, and focal length. They also follow similar rules for creating images. Now, the rules for lenses both types. One, rays that are parallel to the principal axis are refracted, so they appear to pass through the focal point. Rays that pass through the focal point are refracted parallel to the principal axis, and rays that pass through the optical center of the lens do not refract. So, let's quickly go back to the original lens here. So, a light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted to the focus. Now, let's go focus, focus. Now, note the lenses have two focuses because the light can go through either way. So, let's put our image here. So, a light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted through the focus. Okay? Now, rays that pass through the focus get refracted parallel to the principal axis. And the third rule, a light ray that goes straight to the center keeps on going. does not get refracted at all. So here we have our image. I'll show you. Now, this we can shine on a piece of paper so it's real and it's inverted. Offhand, I can't tell. It looks to be about the same size. I'd have to do some calculations later about that. But see what's happening there? Now, concave lenses are a little different. Well, they're the same idea. You have your focus here. You have another focus on this side. So if you have your image, so you have your object. So, now pay attention. These are a little sneaky. First rule, a light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted as though it went through the principal focus. Okay? Now, A ray that goes to the focal point gets refracted as though refracted parallel to the principal axis. Now, this one's a pain in the bum. 
to go through the focus. So we normally skip that one. We talk about the third one, light ray that goes to the focus center of the curvature, keeps on going. So here's our image. Right. So honestly, only use these two rays here. It's so much easier. Please. So only use two of them. And there we go. It's our image. Erect, smaller, and virtual. It's the same size as the lens. Now, do a few questions here. Now, note while the light, the ray passing through the center of the lens was not that helpful when dealing with curvature mirrors, it comes in handy here with lenses. And when constructing an image from a ray diagram, you only need two of the three rays listed above to get a bearing on the image. Otherwise, it just gets messy. Now, the same equations we use for curved mirrors to describe image characteristics are also used for lenses. So the mirror equation, 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di, and the magnification equation, m equals hi ho, which equals minus dido. All right? Now, only difference is the conversions we use for positive and negative numbers. The f is positive for convex lenses, negative for concave. D is positive for real images and objects. It's negative for virtual images and virtual objects. You can have a virtual object if you've got two or more lenses, but we generally don't talk about that in Physics 30. Height, positive for rect images, negative for inverted images. All right, so let's do a few questions. Now, a convergent lens has a focal length of three centimeters. An object 0.5 centimeters high is placed at a distance of four centimeters from the lens. Draw a ray diagram for the image and determine the distance from the lens to the image and the height of the image using the lens formulas. Okay, so I've given you a convergent lens here. It has a focal length of three centimeters. So let's go focal length, call that three centimeters. An ob uh, object 0.5 centimeters high is placed at a distance of four centimeters from the lens. So let's put our object here. Now, if it's half a centimeter high, it's really short, so there it is. So, draw a ray diagram for the image and determine the distance from the lens to the image. Okay, so, parallel to the principal axis, it's refracted through the focus. Parallel to the principal axis, it gets refracted. So, they said any two of these rays will work. So here's our image over here. Larger. Real. Inverted. All right, don't work. Whatever. Now. Sometimes you got to make your ray a little bigger. Now, we're asking for the distance from the lens to the image and the height of the image. So we need distance image So the focal length is 3 centimeters. So 1 over 3 equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over di 1 over di Let me do the math I get 1 over 12, so di is 12, 1 over 12, not 1 over 2. Now, look at your crude drawing. If this is 3, 3, 6, 8, 10, okay, if I use the ruler, yes, I believe that. Distance the image is 12. Now, Now we ask the height of the image. So height of image, we don't know. Height of object is 0 0.5. Minus distance to the image is minus 12. Distance to the object is 4. So high is uh, minus 12 over 4 is 3. 3 times uh, minus, no, minus 1.5. So three times the height of the object and inverted. So yes, that's why we always do one of these uh, calculations, always do the ray diagram to go with the calculations. 
Now, the next question. The object from part A is moved to a distance of 3 centimeters from the lens. Draw a ray diagram for the image and determine the distance from the lens to the image and the height of the image. All right. So, you guys, I'm going to pause the recording. You do the ray diagram. Start the calculations. All right. Welcome back. Now, this one is sneaky, which is why I told you to start. You've got your focal length, your object. Now, light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted through the focus. Light ray through the focus gets refracted parallel to the principal axis. The second one doesn't work because we're right in the focus. So the third one through the center keeps on going. You notice those two light rays are parallel. No image will be formed. I can prove it. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. One over, the focal length and the distance of the object are the same. So 1 over DI is 0. So DI is 1 over 0, which does not exist. Infinite. So this is what happens. Uh, so you can turn your magnifying glass into a um, spotlight. And that's a lovely demonstration doing class. Anyway, now, another question for you to try. The object from part A is moved to a distance of 2 centimeters from the lens. Draw a ray diagram for the image and determine the distance from the lens to the image and the height of the image. So, focal length. Focal length is 3. Two, so the object is 2 centimeters from the lens, so it's going to be here. So, this one's getting a little difficult, but light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted through the focus. I can't do the one through the focus, so I, but I can do the third one through the center. No, not the best drawing, but you see these light rays aren't parallel. If you extend them back, you're getting your image back here. This is virtual. Erect and larger. So, that's try proving that. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. 1 over 2 plus 1 over DI. So, this is 1 third minus half, which is 1 over DI equals minus 1 over 6. DI is minus 6. Virtual. Same side of the lens. Now, this is a magnifying glass. If you have one at home, you can play with it. And this is how magnifying glasses work. If you take the magnifying glass too far away, you, don't, you no longer see a large image, you see something small. And inverted. But anyway, so... Determine the distance of the lens, the image, the height of the image. Oh, I forgot. M equals hi ho over minus di do. So, height of the image. Now, remember, this is still a 0 0.5 centimeter. Three. So, it should be three times taller. From my crude drawing, Yes, I agree with that. Okay? So that's what I expect you to be able to do. Now, I admit I'm doing this kind of fast, but it's pretty much the same as we did with mirrors, curved mirrors. And you show me you can do that. So, let's do a couple more. A divergent lens, ugh, a divergent lens has a focal length of 3 centimeters. An object is 2 centimeters from the lens, has a height of 0.5 centimeters. Determine the distance from the lens to the image and the height of the image. So, Focal length of 3, so that's 3 centimeters, and the object is 2 centimeters from the lens and has a height of half a centimeter, so roughly like that. So where's the image? And where's the height? So light ray parallel to the principal axis gets refracted as though it went through. The second one going through the focus kind of sucks, so let's do the third one going through the center. So there's our object. Stress this. I'm going to make the image purple. Those two lines cross. 
Now this is virtual, smaller, and erect. So with the diverging lens, they're always erect, virtual, and smaller. Now proving that is not hard. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. Now, the focus is negative, so that's minus 3 centimeters. Distance to the object is 2, but that's a real object, so it's 1 over 2 plus 1 over di. So minus a third, minus a half, 1 over di is 5, 6, which is minus 5, 6. Di is minus 6 over 5, which is minus 1.2 centimeters. From my crude, crude drawing, I agree with that. Oh, height of the image. This is the image, minus, minus 1.2 over 2. I is 5 and 0 0.5 is minus minus 0 0.6. Height of the image is 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.3 centimeters. Yes, if the original image is half a centimeter tall from my crude drawing, sorry, if the original object is half a centimeter from my crude drawing, HI is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 centimeters is reasonable. All right? Now notice I keep harping on do a darn picture. Do a ray diagram. It's not a suggestion because it's so easy converging, diverging. Anyway, just do the, do the ray diagram. A movie camera has a converging lens with a focal length of 85 millimeters. It takes a picture of a 145 centimeter tall man standing 16 meters away. What's the height of the image in the film? And is the image erect or inverted? Now, just be careful. Movie camera, converging lens. So it goes like that. Now, focal length of 85 millimeters. It takes a picture of 145 men standing 16 meters away. So if this guy is way the heck over here, that's 16 meters. Then what the heck is 85 millimeters? 8.5 centimeters are basically there. Let's go. We'll just cheat and go like that. Really, really close. So actually, let me change the color of that. I'm going to make that purple. Now, remember the three rules. Light ray parallel to the principal axis. Gets refracted through the focus. A light ray that goes through the... I'm, I'm going to do the second one. A light ray that goes through the focus uh, gets refracted parallel to the principal axis. So there's our image there. Inverted. Smaller. That's on the opposite side of the lens, so I can put it on a screen, which makes it real. Now, proving all this stuff, I said, what's the height of the image on the film, and is the image director inverted? It's inverted. Now, uh, we figure out height. So we still have to figure out distance to the image. Darn it. 1 over f equals 1 over d. O plus 1 over di. Focal length. Now here, I'm going to put that 8.5 centimeters, 0 0.085 of a meter. Everything has to be the same units. I prefer meters. Does it really matter? No. Now when you do this, distance the image is 0 0.0855 centimeters just beyond the focus, or 8.55 centimeters just beyond the focus, which is reasonable for my crude drawing. So he's 140, sorry, what's the height of the image? Height of the object, the man is 145 centimeters minus 0 0.0855 divided by 16 meters. So. Plugging the numbers in, what do you get? I get minus, which means inverted, 0 0.77 centimeters. Hey, 
hand. No, wait a minute. Yep, 0.77 of a centimeter. From my crude drawing, yeah, he's pretty tiny compared to his original height. Now, is that the best drawing I could do? No, but we can try. But it's, sorry, a pretty good ray diagram. Diverging lens, all right, so. Diverging lens has a focal length of minus 25 centimeters. Find the distance, image distance when an object is placed 38 centimeters from the lens. Diverging lens. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. F, F. The object is placed 38 centimeters from the lens. So if that's 25, 30, something like that. So where is it? Well, parallel to the principal axis, reflected through the focus, and through the center keeps on going. So there's my image. Okay, find the image distance. One over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. Now, notice here I said nicely, I told you the focal length was negative. I shouldn't have done that. A typical question, I wouldn't. One over... Now, you guys do the math. Confirm to me that the di distance to the image is minus 15.7 centimeters. Okay. Need you to prove that. I'm getting too lazy. And this is virtual. It's always virtual with a diverging lens. Okay? Or concave. It's erect, smaller, and virtual. Now that's it for me. Give it a, give the homework a try and good luck.